Hey there, and welcome to an update on my random penny stock investment portfolio experiment, where I take real money and then invest that into totally randomly selected penny stocks so that over time I can track the return on investment and see how it does. In a previous video, I used a Google Finance function to randomly generate 10 ticker symbols, and I invested $500 into those penny stocks. Now, in today's video, I'm gonna provide a quick update on how that portfolio has been doing over the past couple of weeks, and I'm going to invest another 500 into 10 more totally randomly selected penny stocks. So here is the overall portfolio, and you can see the total value is $1,012.46. Now, I just added another $500, so I'm actually only up $12.46 over the past week, week and a half or so. Now, I'm gonna talk about a couple of these companies, not all of them, because that would take too long, but there's a few interesting things that I wanted to know. First of all is Neocorp Developments. Now, this one is interesting because it popped up dramatically right after I bought it, and it was up something like 30% in the couple days after I purchased it, and it's since come back down. So it's an interesting look into the volatility of these type of penny stocks. Nevertheless, I'm still actually up 11.38% on that one over you know less than two weeks, which is obviously an incredible return over such a short period of time. The next stock that I wanna highlight is CloudMD Software and Services Inc. Now this one is interesting. I actually ended up doing a bit of research on it after it was randomly generated by my ticker symbol randomizer. And it turns out that it's actually a pretty hyped up company. I'm up 24.14% on this over the last week and a half, two weeks or so on my 29 shares. So this one's actually doing very well but it has a lot of people saying that it has some serious potential. And that's because it's in the Teladoc space, which has become very popular as a result of the pandemic and people you know, wanting to have doctor visits without actually having to go into the clinic. So that's an interesting one to track. Those are a couple of my biggest gainers and some of the more interesting ones that had some movement over the past couple of weeks. Now, as you can see, I have $502 cash still in the account, and that's what I'm going to be investing with today. I'm going to find 10 more random penny stock ticker symbols and invest $50 into each one of those companies. Before I do that though, I want to rectify a mistake that I made in my last video where I said that ticker symbol KSI or neat.com incorporated was actually not available on Well Simple Trade because it turns out that it is available on Well Simple Trade. So I am going to invest $50 into that company right now so that I can fulfill what I said I was gonna do, which is invest in all of the randomly generated ticker symbols that my formula generated for me. So that's gonna be number one of the 10 companies that I invest in today, and now I have to go in search of nine more ticker symbols. So back to the TD Stock Screener tool now. I'm going to search for any companies that are trading between $0 and $5 per share. Last time I actually narrowed it down to 50 cents to $5, but I want to cast the net wider and include as many companies as I can. Only companies that are trading on Canadian stock exchanges though, because I don't want to get hit with foreign exchange fees. Now the next criteria that I want to include in my search here is market cap. And I'm only going to look at companies that have a market cap of $1 billion or less. I didn't include this last time, but I think it's important because really penny stocks should be smaller than $1 billion. When you're thinking of a penny stock, you're not thinking of a massive $40 billion company. The final search criteria that I'm gonna to use today is earnings per share growth from last year to this year. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I just want to weed out companies that I feel like are less likely to succeed, are not growing, and are actually going in the wrong direction. And when I filter for that, I'm left with 980 possible companies, which is much more than last time because like I said, I was only searching for penny stocks that were trading between 50 cents and $5. So by including a wider range of penny stock prices, then I'm gonna have, of course, more results. Now, the issue with that could potentially be that some of these won't be available for trade on Wellsimple, but I'm just going to keep coming back and using that random ticker symbol generator until I find nine more penny stocks that I can buy. So here's the Google Finance spreadsheet with all of the ticker symbols, over 900 of them, and I'm just going to copy-paste my formula a bunch of times and generate a first round of random ticker symbols. Now, if I can't find any of these on Wellsimple Trade, trade available for purchase, then I'll just keep coming back until I find nine. And one final caveat for today is that I'm not buying any more mining companies. In the last video, I had seven out of 10 of the companies that I purchased be in the mining sector, and I want to diversify my penny stock portfolio a little bit. So I'm refusing to buy any more mining companies, and if I come across one of those in my random list, then I'm just gonna replace that with another one. 
And just so that this video doesn't end up being super long and so that you don't have to watch me enter all of these purchase orders on my phone, I'm just going to teleport you to when it's all done. All right, I now have 20 randomly selected penny stocks in my penny stock portfolio, which is going to make this experiment even more interesting. And I think the increased diversity is going to be helpful or beneficial for the portfolio because by concentrating into only 10 penny stocks, I'm increasing my risk if any one individual ticker symbol ends up cratering. So this way I've spread the risk out over many more companies and each initial position was about 5% of the portfolio. Of course, as the stock prices change, those percentages are going to increase or decrease accordingly. Anyways, I'm gonna throw up here a list of all of the companies that I purchased today, including which industry they are in. And up here, I'm gonna show you the Wellsimple portfolio and walk through some of the companies that I purchased and tell you what I think about them. If you're Canadian, you'll actually probably recognize some household names on that list, like Indigo's, the giant bookstore chain, or Roots, a very popular apparel chain with this classic logo. Just as I suspected, the fact that I included penny stocks trading below 50 cents per share meant that a lot of the random ticker symbols that were generated for me aren't actually available on Wellsimple Trade. And I actually had to come back to the spreadsheet several times and do the random generation so that I could get new ticker symbols. All that to say though, eventually I did find 10 companies that I could purchase that were not in the mining sector. And here we go. Now this first one is interesting. It's got ticker symbol ACDC, which of course I love because I'm a huge fan of classic rock. <laughs> It actually operates in the battery or battery metals space, which I think could be an interesting industry. I don't know much about the company specifically, but we know that electric vehicles and electric vehicle batteries are a very hot thing right now. If I look at the price chart over the last year, it's been quite volatile. It really skyrocketed at one point, but since has come back down to earth, it will be an interesting one to watch. The next company is ticker symbol CNE or Canical Energy Limited. Now, this one I found interesting because it's quite large. It has a market cap of 600 mil and it pays a dividend of 6.23%, which is huge. The company actually works in petroleum and natural gas space. And, and obviously it has a readily recurring revenue stream that is paying out dividends to its shareholders. So I, that was a nice surprise. The next ticker symbol is CYM or CIMAT Technologies. It's trading for about a dollar and it's a pretty small one. It's got a market cap of just under 40 million, no dividend. And what this company does is it produces stabilized aluminum foam for the automotive, architectural and blast mitigation industries. So not something that I know very much about. It's a very small company. I'll do some more research into this one later. Over the last year though, this company has increased in value almost 400%, well, which is crazy. The next ticker symbol is FLT, or Drone Delivery Canada Corp. And this one seems actually pretty cool. It's trading for a dollar per share, a dollar 10 per share. And it's pretty large, market cap of 250 mil. Now what this company specializes in is logistics of drone delivery. So what they do is they design, develop, and implement a commercial drone delivery logistics platform. I mean, that's pretty cool. You've been hearing about this stuff for years, like Amazon suggesting that it's going to be delivering packages door to door using drones. Haven't seen it happen yet. Maybe this company is going to be one of the ones that actually helps it happen. Over the last three months, it's come down 25%. But if I look over a longer time horizon, it's been quite volatile peaking at certain points and then coming back down. So it's probably some catalysts involved here. I'm gonna to have to do some more research and see what this one is all about. It's a solid randomly generated ticker symbol. Very cool. Next up is ticker symbol IDG or Indigo Books and Music. Now this one, of course, I know I'm very familiar with. I used to buy books from them all the time. And I guess the fact that I used to buy books from them is why it's come down from $20 per share to less than a dollar and then bump back up to $4 per share. It's definitely in an industry that has been having a rough go with the rise of companies like Amazon. Not that many people are going into actual bookstores to purchase their reading materials there. But that said, I know that the company is trying to pivot because whenever you go into an Indigo's these days, it seems like half of what they're selling is more gifts and notebooks and games and all kinds of other stuff. So they're not just focused on books and maybe that will actually save the company. We'll see. The next company that I bought is ONC or Oncolytics Biotech Incorporated. Now, this is another one that I have no idea what it was about before I purchased it. 
It's got a market cap of under 200 mil. And what it does is it specializes in immuno-oncolytic virus for the treatment of solid tumors and hematological malignancies. Whew. What a mouthful. Yeah, I obviously have no idea what this company is about, but it was selected for me randomly. So who am I to question the almighty algorithm? Over the past five years, this company has seen a lot of volatility and I expect that's not gonna be all that different moving into the future. Moving on now, the next company is Quarter Hill Incorporated. Now this is a relatively large company, almost $300 million market cap, and it also pays a dividend of 2%, which is nice. It's not many penny stocks that pay dividends. Apparently this company is a holding corp that acquires technology companies and manages them using the revenue that it generates to acquire further companies or of course to pay dividends. Over the past year, the company is up 20 plus percent, but over the past five years, it's down by about that much. Okay, next up is Roots, the other household name on my list here. Now this company is actually trading at less than $4 a share. And you can see over the last year though, that it's had a 226% gain, which is crazy. If you look at the five year chart though, it's got a very similar story to Indigo Books and Music. It was doing very well, but then probably because of the e-commerce revolution and the rise of companies like Amazon, the stock cratered and it has been trying to recapture its former glory ever since. The thing about this company though, is that its brand recognition is super strong and I think that it still has potential because it's still popular even today. It would really be a shame actually if the company went under. And so the fact that my random ticker symbol generator suggested I invest in this company is kind of a nice surprise and it's a little bit of a patriotic investment that I can make. I now own $50 worth of the Roots company. The final penny stock that I invested today is ticker symbol DMGI or DMG Blockchain Solutions. According to Wellsimple, the company manages, operates, and develops end-to-end -end digital solutions to monetize the blockchain ecosystem. So this type of thing is very much in vogue right now. And if you've seen some of my other videos, you know that I'm invested in cryptocurrency and very much interested in this space. So I'm happy that this one was recommended to me. I'll add it to the portfolio as soon as this limit purchase order goes through. And then I will have 20 totally random penny stocks in this portfolio. And that is it for today's update on my random penny stock investing experiment. In future videos, I'm gonna do more deep dives on some of these companies especially the more interesting ones. And if there's any significant price action, that will of course be interesting to talk about. And I may actually end up adding more money to the portfolio and increasing my diversification by investing in more random penny stocks. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more updates on this topic, as well as other videos about investing, personal finance and entrepreneurship, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I will see you next time.